I know you're going to dig this. My name is Joseph Keridan. I'm a co-founder of Tessalit. We're based in New York City and Dayton, Ohio. Um, we uh, uh, reached out to David about a little over a year ago uh, after reading the news that the Funk Center had lost its space in the Fireblocks development in downtown Dayton. Um, and date, uh, David got back to us right away and we um, started talking about how we could start to craft the future vision of um, the Funk Center here in Dayton, Ohio. Um, so what we did over the course of the past year is we, uh, working with the board and with David and the uh, Funk Center team, we put together what we call the future vision. Um, and this is the long-term vision of what we think the uh, Funk Center could be. Um, ultimately, it's the end goal of what we want to accomplish uh, in, in building this new uh, exhibition center for uh, funk music. Um, so uh, what we did was we sort of set out to really define the parameters and uh, determine what the key uh, attributes would be for this new funk center. So the first question we had to ask was, you know, why, why in Dayton, Ohio? Um, and the answer became pretty obvious as we started to uh, delve deeper into that question. Um, there were so many bands that came out of Dayton, Ohio, um, about 11 acts t in total, I'm sure much more. Um, everyone from the Ohio Players, the Lakeside, Heat Wave, um, Sun, Slave, Zap, um, there's uh, almost too many to mention. So it was really this really interesting uncovering of uh, the, the sort of history of funk music um, from the Dayton area and actually the Southern Ohio region. Um, and on the next slide, you'll see uh, that what we wanted to do is craft what that vision was. Um, and the vision was really to establish a home in Dayton, Ohio, that really um, talks about the legacy of funk music from this area and really celebrates the artists uh, who came out of this uh, region. And uh, to tell the story of, of that history of funk and its evolution from uh, the Dayton area, um, it, we thought it was really interesting that, you know, when you talk about the history of a place, you tend to talk about industry and the, the economic forces that shape that place. But really, uh, in order to really tell the whole story, um, you also have to talk about its cultural impact. And so um, we really felt that that story um, needed to be told. And, and this was a great opportunity to do that. Um, on the next slide, uh, you'll see our mission, which is really about creating an immersive funk experience. And it's, it's an experience for the whole community, for everyone um, to enjoy, especially children. Um, I think uh, one of the core missions of what we want to build is a place where kids can be inspired uh, again to, uh, to pursue an interest in music. So um, I think creating an environment where kids and their families can come and, and get excited about not only music, but uh, about the history of funk music from this region, um, and to learn more about uh, where it is that they came from and, and what helped shaped uh, Dayton in, during that time period. Um, some of the values that we wanted to establish early on were these ideas of diversity and in inclusion, which is really important. Um, traditionally, museums um, are sort of viewed as for a very small segment of the general population. Um, and we wanted to create a place where everybody felt that they could come here and that they were welcome here and that they could participate um, and engage with it. Um, so collaboration with the community was really important. Um, 
getting the local community engaged and involved um, would be key to uh, establishing the Funk Center and not only establishing it, but sustaining it over time. Without community buy-in, without community support, um, it, it will be a bigger challenge to uh, not only establish, but to maintain over time. Um, and we also wanted to uh, instill a sense of empowerment and inspiration. Obviously, we want um, uh, younger kids and their families to come in here, in here and not just have an exciting experience, but to feel inspired by these stories um, and to want to pursue and, and learn more and engage um, and get excited about um, the, the really rich history of funk music in Dayton. Um, it, as well, it has to be um, innovative and fun. You know, fun is a, is a key element that I think sometimes gets uh, left out in the equation. Um, so we felt that um, not only providing an innovative um, and, and cool experience, but also that um, families could uh, enjoy themselves and, and interact with each other. Um, passion and respect and risk taking were also really important values that we wanted this place to sort of instill in people, um, not only before they came to visit, but during their visit. And, and once they left, we wanted that inspiration to continue on and um, allow them to explore and, and learn more. Um, on the next slide, you'll see uh, what we want to start to take you through is um, basically the foundation of what we envision for the future. Um, and and a, Again, going back to this idea that um, we want to create a place where everybody feels welcome, that it's not just a, a very formal um, place, but it's a place where um, you can dress up or dress down. It's very formal um, when it needs to be and very informal when it needs to be as well. So the idea of having induction ceremonies, um, uh, you know, black tie events, as well as, uh, you know, having uh, concerts and shows and other performances there. So it, it, we don't really see it as a place where you, we're going to put a bunch of old artifacts and, and some placards, but a place where people can engage and um, uh, be, be a part of the larger community. Um, on the next slide, you'll see um, this. Uh, we, we basically mapped out early on what were the large content narratives that we wanted to create. So um, our firm, Tesselit, really specializes in um, telling narratives through the use of architectural space um, and how you experience those narratives uh, within the physical environment. Um, so what we did was we sort of mapped out what these large content areas would be. Um, obviously, we're going to need a lobby where you, know, you can get tickets and come in, and there would be a cafe and a, a little retail store in there. But um, in terms of the exhibition spaces, we wanted to create um, an exhibition on the history um, that talks about the history, not only of funk music, but also of uh, how funk evolved uh, here in Dayton and in central Ohio, um, and also across the world. Uh, we wanted to talk about the culture of funk, um, how funk influenced art and fashion and design, um, and how funk was really a, a cultural movement as much as it was a musical movement. Um, obviously, we'll have a Hall of Fame that uh, celebrates a lot of the uh, past and present um, funk artists. Um, and also, we want to tell the story about Dayton and its connection to funk music. Um, <coughs> excuse me. For, for the younger kids and their families, we wanted to create um, a science exhibit um, that's really kind of a hands-on interactive uh, exhibit space where kids can uh, learn about the very basic principles of the science behind funk. So really tying it to STEM initiatives. Um, it, it's not really so much about the emotional aspects of, of music, but how you make music and what makes music. Um, and of course, a, a special exhibition hall that can change out over time. It could change um, once or twice a year um, to sort of keep things fresh and keep things new so that when visitors come back, there's an, something new to see. Um, we also envisioned an auditorium at the heart of this experience. Um, we wanted to create a venue where you could have uh, uh, concerts, induction ceremonies, um, larger community events where everyone can come and participate. 
Um, and also a really important um, component to this would be classrooms where school groups could come in and kids could get to play and experiment with instruments um, and really explore music in a more hands-on way. Um, on the next slide is uh, basically an overview. So we're sort of looking down on the design of it, um, looking at all of those components that come together. Um, now we sort of map that content into the floor plan of, a, of a, a, what we envisioned as the building, so to speak. Um, and you'll see at the center you have a, a large auditorium space, again for those community gatherings, a gift shop in the lobby, ticketing, um, and then the first experience that you'll encounter is what we call the Time Machine exhibit. It's, uh, it's that history exhibit that takes you through the history and evolution of funk music, which then leads into what we call the Mothership uh, exhibit uh, that really explores the funkadelic movement um, and the sort of influences of funkadelic on, on funk music in general. Um, and then from there, a Hall of Fame space that um, takes you through past and present inductees into the Hall of Fame um, uh, for the, uh, a special exhibit that would include both artifacts as well as uh, imagery and media around each of those artists. Um, and then we also have, uh, after that, we have a, a space that we're uh, calling Connecting the World, which is about Dayton and Ohio and how that music and that um, movement within uh, the, the local Dayton scene sort of expanded out not only to the United States, but how it expanded across the world. Um, and then we have the Science of Funk exhibits um, that are the hands-on uh, interactive and collaborative um, exhibits for uh, kids and families. Um, and then the Changing Exhibit Hall and Cafe on the, on the very first floor when you walk in. So basically the main floor is dedicated to uh, the main exhibit hall as well as the auditorium space. Um, the next sli slide shows us the second floor of the, um, of the proposed building which would include community rooms, um, uh, practice rooms, recording and mixing rooms, um, a series of different classrooms. So school groups could come here or um, uh, kids and their families could come here and they could play together, get their hands on musical instruments, get their hands on recording and mixing equipment, and really play and dabble and explore uh, in a very hands-on way. Um, we feel like the idea of bringing the arts and culture back into the Dayton community is really important. Um, it, and, and framing it within the context of how Dayton uh, really influenced the, the music community um, with funk music um, to bring that inspiration back uh, in, into that, uh, this next generation that's um, coming, coming of age. Um, the next slide shows us an exterior view. Um, again, this is sort of a proposed long-term vision um, of, of a building that we felt had to embody the idea of funk. Um, so uh, after many months of talking with the board and um, doing a number of different design iterations, we sort of uh, came upon this idea of creating uh, sort of two elements that make up the building. One which is uh, the main structure itself, which is a very sort of structured um, building, um, and then what we call informally the wave which is a large canopy that sort of um, covers the entrance and the roof uh, the roof deck on top um, so these two elements sort of coming together we felt um, would create a really dynamic uh, interaction uh, not only architecturally but um, also the sort of emotional impact as you approach the building we felt had to be um, really strong um, the next slide shows us uh, a closer in view as you um, walk towards the entrance uh, underneath that large canopy that swoops overhead. Um, so in the front is sort of a, um, an outdoor seating area, semi-covered um, space where people can gather. Um, food trucks could pull up in the summer. Um, you know, you could have bands playing outside. Um, the idea of having music infuse this place was really important. Um, not only do we want to talk about music, but we want people to hear music, we want people to play music, um, and we want people to experience music. So 
um, this outdoor space we felt uh, could be a really great um, sort of setup before you get into uh, the actual building itself. Um, and on the next slide you'll see as you enter into the building, there's the main cafe. Um, and looking towards the entrance, you see the entrance into the auditorium. Um, so the inside of the space is a, a, a fairly large space with that big round volume in the middle, which would be the auditorium. Again, <clears throat> the idea of having live performances as being at the heart of this uh, was a really important concept that we wanted to uh, get across in this design. Um, as you walk towards the entrance of the um, museum, you'll see on the next slide um, that there are t uh, the retail store, ticketing booths, um, and the entrance into the exhibit hall. Um, and on the next slide, you'll see that we have um, this sort of dynamic portal that brings you into the actual exhibit hall itself. Uh, again, starting with that um, story of history, um, recounting the history of funk music um, in a broader context, but also um, how it evolved over time as an art form. Uh, the next slide shows us as we um, step into uh, the exhibit hall, um, the uh, what we call the time machine exhibit, um, a, a series of uh, uh, displays that have artifacts in them from funk bands uh, from locally from Dayton, but also uh, from across the, the funk genre. Um, and it's sort of broken up into a sequential uh, time experience. So the idea is as you walk from display case to display case, you see how funk music sort of evolved over time. You can hear the music as you stand in front of uh, each of these exhibits um, so that you hear how the music changed um, as, as, uh, the, as it progressed as an art form. Um, coming out of the Time Machine exhibit, you'll see on the next slide what we call the Mothership. Um, the Mothership is a space that we, we wanted to really embody this idea of Funkadelic. Um, and so we felt like creating this really dynamic space um, that had a, a really uh, interesting and dynamic form and lighting as a part of it. Um, that it would be a multimedia experience, um, a somewhat psychedelic experience uh, that sort of encapsulates what the Funkadelic movement was about. Um, so when you step in on the next slide, you'll see um, there's large projections overhead, very colorful, very powerful. It really captures um, the sort of cultural movement that the Funkadelic movement was for funk. Um, so it's a mixture of artifacts and music, um, uh, multimedia animations, um, and it really, we wanted um, visitors to feel like they're stepping into um, a time machine or a spaceship. Um, so it's, it's a really high energy space um, that really um, sets to uh, convey this idea of uh, the, the Funkadelic movement. Um, on the next slide, you'll see uh, stepping into what we call the Hall of Fame. Um, so this will be a mixture of um, printed graphics as well as motion graphics and dynamic media that sort of celebrate um, all of the bands, again, past and present, that um, contributed to the funk movement and helped shape it and evolve it. Um, in addition to the multimedia experience, you know, you'll hear the music and the sounds um, of those bands. You can uh, view artifacts um, of significant um, uh, artifacts that uh, tell the story of each of these bands and, and their influence on, on the funk uh, genre. Um, on the next exhibit, you'll see this, uh, what we're called, the, we, we call it the Connecting the World exhibit. Um, <clears throat> within this, uh, the idea that we wanted to convey was there was a movement within Dayton, but there was also uh, um, that movement sort of spread from Dayton to Cincinnati and Indianapolis and obviously Michigan up in Detroit. Um, but how that influence sort of spread uh, not only across Ohio and the United States, but uh, um, also spread across the world. So it's this idea of uh, starting in Dayton and then zooming out. Um, another part of this will be um, interactive album covers that visitors can select and <clears throat> and they can see sort of like 
what other bands were influenced by these Ohio bands, like the Ohio Players or Zap or Slave, um, so that you can trace how funk music, not only then at that time, influenced other bands, but how it transcended time and influences bands today, and how a lot of that music got sampled and, and um, sort of repackaged um, during the rap and hip hop um, movements. Um, and s to sort of see how the Red Hot Chili Peppers are connected to the Ohio players and uh, this very intricate interconnection of funk music to um, more popular uh, forms of music. Um, on the next slide, uh, these are just a few samplings of uh, some of the interactive science exhibits that we would have for younger kids and their families. Um, teaching the very basic principles, so for example, when you blow in a horn, how air m moves through that horn to create different pitches and tones. Um, so kids can sort of um, see uh, how, how music is created um, from a physics point of view. Um, and what is the science uh, behind how music is made. Um, on the next slide, one of the important stories that we wanted to talk about was how funk was so rooted in, in always coming back on the one. Um, that uh, in, in those four counts, uh, each musician could sort of explore their own territory, but they always had to come back on the one. So the idea is to really teach younger children um, the idea of timing and um, and how funk music really changed uh, how musicians thought about timing. So um, allowing them a hands-on collaborative experience where they can beat on a drum and they almost like uh, um, the video game uh, Rockstar where they could like um, learn about timing and collaboration and how a band has to work together to uh, create this music. Um, on the next slide, we talk about uh, guitars and uh, frequencies, and um, it's sort of a large guitar neck that kids can uh, collaborate and play on. They could play different notes, so it, three or four of them could form an, uh, an A chord or an E chord, um, and then somebody could strum, and they could hear, uh, you know, by uh, combining these different frequencies, you can create notes together. Um, so really, it's, it's the idea of, uh, learning how to um, play together and um, collaborate together. Um, and on the next slide, you'll see uh, the, uh, what, what, we, what we're calling the sort of community space or the auditorium. Um, it, so this, again, is at the heart of the experience. It's, a, it's at the heart of the building. It's one of the most important components to the building, we feel. Um, because this is the place where you know we'll, you can host concerts, you can host events, um, and it's a place where everyone is welcome, um, and you celebrate all forms of music. Um, so not only funk, but to also um, really uh, participate and engage with uh, the musical scene in Dayton, Ohio today, and and uh, and from the past. Um, but it's, it's really a place where the community can, uh, can come together. Um, on the next slide, um, one of the things that we wanted to uh, talk about was now that we have the, the future vision, the big picture, uh, how do we get there? Um, and so we need to understand what are the small steps. It's, it's really easy to dream. Um, and so the, the real challenge is how do you accomplish that dream? How do you bring that dream to life? And some of the things that we've been exploring are, you know, not only uh, hosting events, which are happening today, you know, the Funk Center is, is really working hard to get out into the community and get the word out. Um, they're hosting events, they're, um, they're engaging with the community, but we thought, well, what if we created a vehicle that could go around and teach kids about the very basic principles of music, could show up in a park and you could uh, listen to live music out of the what, what we're calling the funk bus. Um, so it's this idea of getting out into the community um, and spreading the word and allowing people to experience a little piece of this before, um, before the actual larger vision um, is, is, is built. Um, and what inspired this idea was, um, you know, uh, throughout Dayton in the 70s, there was a, a vehicle that went around and they had battles of the bands. 
um, in Dayton um, in, in the parks. And so we wanted to recapture that. Um, so we thought the idea of creating a vehicle that could go out into the community um, and help build excitement and momentum behind the project would, would be a real added benefit. Um, and so really the, the, what we wanted to do is um, start to put together this, this vision that we could share out with everyone um, and then uh, start to create these little steps. So um, the idea of not only events, but doing uh, pop-up exhibits in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, and, and obviously the induction ceremony, the Funk Symposium coming up in September are, are ways in which we're taking those steps towards uh, creating this larger vision. Thank you. I can't swim. I never could swim. <laughs>